Hey guys, welcome to another free sample of our newest course, Mechanical Animal Making for Production. In this course, I'm going to be guiding you through the creation of the whole character. And in this free video, I'm going to be sharing with you a couple of the tricks that we use for the armor. Now, if you want to get the course for 90% off, this is the time. This is the moment because we have the code available until March 6th. So it's going to be three more days at the time of this recording. March 6th is the deadline for the 90% promo code. Make sure to check the link down here. And uh, yeah, just enjoy, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you back on the next one. Hi guys, welcome back to the next part of the series. Today we're going to continue with the foot armor. I think we're going to go from easy to hard in this one because uh, we're going to be learning some stuff along the way. And once we hit the complicated pieces like this one's right here, we're going to have a lot of skills that I want to show you with this particular one. So as you can see with this one, of course, we're going to go to this one, just delete half of it. Let's uh, delete history. There we go. Um, the, and actually, let me... No, that's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll just do a, another video after this one. I'm going to show you a really cool scripting thing. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to just give this a rough shape of what we want. And you can see that these two edges right here are pretty much beveled. So we're going to bevel them. But however, what we're going to do is I'm going to grab this edge right here. And as you can see, the shape on the front seems to be a little bit more square than on the bottom. So I'm going to play around with the, with the shapes of the objects a little bit right here to get something that looks a little bit closer to what we have on the concept piece. Now, one of the things that you can do to have a, an easier time when modeling is a, a concept called modeling from the inside. Usually we model from the outside, meaning we create the outer shell and then from this outer shell, we extrude um, in if we, in case we want thickness. But we've seen that doing that can cause some issues, especially if we don't control the edge flow uh, properly, right? So by doing what I'm about to show you, which is extruding out, usually we can alleviate a little bit of that problems or some of those problems and generate a mesh that looks a little bit cleaner, as you can see right here. However, before we do that, I definitely want to fix this one right here. I'm going to show you a quick trick. I'm going to control E, extrude out and offset with little squares right here like this to create a sort of like a rounded edge. And then as uh, you guys know, we can delete this one right here. And with our knife brush, I'm going to cut from this point to this point right here. There we go. So now we have this shape right here. Um, uh, we really don't need to be too concerned. We don't need to be too concerned about the shape because it's going to be covered by this metallic bit right here. And actually, now that I see it, we might need to have this thing be a little bit sharper than I, what I had. So I'm actually going to modify this a little bit like that. Now uh, we're going to extrude out to create the thickness that we want for the, for the armor plate, which is going to be, I would say, probably something like that. And uh, we, of course, need to harden this, right? Because this is going to be this shape right here. Now, this little detail, I think I am going to add it as a, as a model detail. But this one right here, I'm going to add it as a texture. So uh, for the outer details, let's uh, isolate this thing real quick. And we don't have a lot of geometry. So we might be able to get away with our traditional like um, fraction and bevel thing. There we go. Because we know that's going to give us a really nice hard surface look for this block right there. Now, I'm already going to add... Uh, with our cut tool, we're going to add a D division right there, right there, right there, and right there. I'm going to do 50%, 70%, and 70% right there. And I'm going to grab uh, this six elements right there. Actually, I'm just going to grab two of them. Control E, offset, Control E, and push this in. As you can see, that's going to give us a nice little detail there for the for the foot. looks a little bit small though. Let's go back and let's grab the sixes I originally intended. So we grabbed six there. Control E. Oh, careful there. Control E. We offset a little bit and then Control E and we push in. Remember, we have quite a bit of thickness, but don't go overboard. And there we go. It's going to give us a very nice detail. Now, if we feel like this detail is way too like a little bit like fat, we want it to be a little bit longer, we can just scale this up, like no big deal right there. And as you can see, we're going to get the very, very nice detail right there. Cool. So now we have this piece right here, which is going to be on top of this element, but it's kind of like an armor. So I'm going to show you a very cool process. I don't think we've used this one before. So here we go. Uh, first of all, I'm going to go to the front view and I'm going to delete half of this thing. Why? Because this thing we can just mirror and we're going to have the exact same thing and it's just going to make the next step a lot easier. So I'm going to grab this guy and I'm going to turn on a live surface. And with my quadro tool, I'm actually going to draw the profile of the armor that I want. So it seems like the armor starts right there, goes right here. It creates like this little section right there. 
and we're gonna do this. Now it has a sharp line, so we're probably gonna have the sharp line right here. Right around there. And then this thing goes, or actually kind of goes around the whole thing right here. I want to play with the angles a little bit right there. There we go. We go down. We rebuild the geometry here. That's it. There we go. And then on this side, we're going to add another line. It's going to be going all the way to the back. Let's go all the way to the back like that. And right around here, we have this sort of like detail, right? So we're going to lower this, this, and modify this thing a little bit so we get the very interesting and nice looking armor bit. I think I'm going to go around as well. It just makes sense, to be honest. And there we go. So now we have uh, this piece right here, which we can, of course, extrude out. And look at that. That's going to create the nice little like armor piece that we uh, want on this particular uh, place. Now, this line right here, I think we can delete it. That's going to give us a sharper look, like super, super blocky. We, of course, are going to delete this guys right here. Select the object, go to front view, select all of the vertices that are right here, align them so they're perfectly flat and V snap them to the foot. So they're perfectly in line with the foot. Now we uh, can move the pivot point. This is very important. We're going to go to the front view again. The pivot point should be on the center. Shift, right click, and we're going to mirror on the object option. Object will always take your pivot point as the uh, source of your element or your movement. So we're going to mirror right there. And as you can see, we'll get this. Now, of course, all of these vertices right here, I'm going to flatten them out so they're perfectly, perfectly straight. And that's it. We got this shape right here. We can do the same thing for this one, shift, right click, mirror, and look at that. We got the very nice like border there for the uh, foot. This, of course, is probably going to be some sort of like a rubber or something, and uh, and we're going to be able to, to make this thing look quite, quite nice. Now, you can see here that we actually have some indentations. Those might be some of the elements that we do want to have. So I'm going to use my offset edge loop tool to offset some edge loops right here. As you can see, there's three of them, and look at the trick that I'm going to show you here. I'm going to isolate this piece to work a little bit faster. And I'm going to grab like this guy's right here. Like the lines, see, the lines going back. And remember, if we bevel those, we're going to create a nice little uh, row, right? We do create some angles. Don't worry about those just yet. But we're going to create a, this little indentations right here, which are pretty much edge loops. They're not full edge loops because we stop them at a particular point, thanks to the, to the triangle that we have right there. But they are edge loops. So we can just select this guy's right there. Control E. And the, I know this kind of looked to be going in. I kind of want to move this out. So I'm going to offset a little bit. And play around with the thickness. Because I, I feel that could be like a little bit of traction that we can gain uh, for the ground and stuff. So there we go. Now, how do we fix all of these angles right here? Well, some of them are going to be easy to fix. Like this guy right here. And... This guy right here, that's a square, that's a square. And then here, we can just have um, like probably a triangle right there. It's a flat area or a flat-ish area. So as long as we're not like destroying the topology, we should be fine. There we go. Same deal over here with G. I'm just going to repeat the last action, which is my knife brush. And we're going to go from one point to the other. And then from here to the triangle right there. And I know this kind of breaks one of the rules, which is never to have one point with more than six uh, elements. I right know they're not six, it's five of them, but it, it could be, it's not problematic. It's just, uh, it just looks a little bit weird. So uh, now uh, we need to decide how to make this thing hard surface, right? And again, one option is of course, to just bevel everything with two segments and a small fraction. And that should give us a really, really blocky effect as you can see right there. It's a little bit more blocky than I would like. Like you can, can you see that little like, like pinch that we get right there? So one thing we could do is maybe remove this guy right there. It's going to soften things up a little bit, or I'm going to show you here another option. This is an option that I don't use as much, but it's really handy, which is when you have a pinch like this one, we know that pinches happen because edges are really close together. So if I go to this guy and this guy, I can go to mesh tools and there's this option called, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. 
uh, where is it? Slide Edge. The option is called Slide Edge. There we go. Slide Edge is with middle mouse button. So you click the middle mouse button and you're going to be able to move or you should be able to move. There we go. The edge like that. And that's going to modify the topology quite a bit, but it's also going to get rid of the um, of the pinch. So now, as you can see, these guys do not have the pinch. We do have a little bit of the pinch right here. We could, of course, go back again and select from like this guy right here, like that little guy right there and that little guy right there. Press G and just move this up a little bit like there and do the same with the other one. We grab this one, go all the way to here and go right there. And that's it. So yes, we're going to have a little bit of a split right here on the corner. It shouldn't be that much of a deal, and we have a really, really nice hard surface uh, effect. Now, the amount of triangles that we're getting is getting a little bit ridiculous. You can see we go from 3,000 triangles for this, like, uh, layer of armor to almost, uh, <laughs> like, 50,000 triangles. But again, I've, I've shown you before some other examples. I know this poly count seems, like, crazy, but it is close to what we might have to do uh, for specific, like, productions and stuff. Now, the one thing that's bothering me quite a bit is the fact that this does not fit perfectly on the on the shoe um, or on the on the actual like skeleton. And uh, that that would be fine. However, you guys know me. I like to to do things that look a little bit nicer, even if we're not going to see them like a lot. So one thing that we can do here is I'm thinking that if this thing were to rotate, it would rotate from around here. So just adding some sort of like box or hinge or something right here might be more than enough to give us that sort of uh, connection point. Some people might not even bother about that. But again, it's just one little detail that like we it's not going to affect anyone. Uh, it's what I mean. It's not going to like really destroy or make things like super intense in regards to topology. So we can even like just recycle something like, for instance, this guy right here or Let's see, do we have that, that guy right there? So I'm just going to control D, the, the neck. And just use this as a hinge. It's going to be attached to the, to the, um, to the foot. Well, it's a little bit difficult there to, to see if we're exactly on the middle of the foot. That seems to be it. And there we go. Like, even if we don't like barely see it. It just makes me more comfortable to know that there's something attaching this uh, thing. One thing we could do, though, is we can just, like, move this back a little bit like that. And again, when, when people see just that small little connection, it, it's just going to look way, way better. So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. As you can see, we got this very nice piece of armor, really hard surfacey, really, really, like, tight. And, um, and yeah, and so, some of you might be like, well, can't we like eliminate some of the edge loops that we added when we did the bevel? And the answer is it depends because most of them are actually supporting things that we need. So for instance, this guy right here is supporting the edge on this guy. And if we were to delete this one, it's going to make it look slightly softer on this side. So yes, if, if, if performance definitely becomes an issue for you, you could definitely try deleting some of the edge loops and see if that alleviates the, um, the amount of uh, topology that you have. But again, I, I wouldn't recommend it. it. It's not, it shouldn't be that much of a deal. And uh, this is like a normal amount of polygons that we might be working with. As you can see, we're almost at half a million polygons with uh, with the whole thing right here. Well, less than that. Triangles, 2,000 triangles. Now, um, thinking ahead, when we get into texturing, that's when we might have a little bit of issues because we, with texturing, it could get quite heavy inside of Substance, Substance Painter. So I'm going to show you a couple of tricks to, to optimize. We might need to export things as separate pieces. But yeah, so that's pretty much it for now. Let's just add a very quick material here. Let the uh, armor and the black rubber. There we go. You can grab these two guys and, of course, mirror them to the other side on the world. On the world. And we're going to have our foots. And uh, as we saw earlier, or when we did the uh, the back foots, we can actually already have this once, to be honest. I'm just going to delete history. Control D. Let's just recycle. Like, no need to redo or reinvent the wheel. We're just going to grab this guys right here. Get them into position as close as possible. Like right around there. 
And these guys actually already have this like black thing here. So it's perfect for, for what we want. The only thing that's a little bit different is that section line that we have right there. Um, if we want to add it, we could do it with like uh, some modeling stuff. Let me show you here. here. So I'm going to grab these two guys. Just get these guys out. I'm going to grab the, um, the element right there. Control E. Offset. And then this guys. Control E. Offset. Control E. Push in a little bit. And of course, we're going to need some uh, extra support edges. So one right there. One right there and one right there. And that's going to give us the sort of like extra little detail that we have. Some of you might be like, well, maybe we don't need this guy anymore. And you guys would be totally right. Like we actually don't need this guy. So let me show you here how to very quickly destroy it. We just do that. Delete these lines right here. And bridge from here to here. That's the beauty of doing like proper topology and everything. If you build your stuff in such a way that's very modular, then changing things like I just did there is very, very easy because everything flows and follows the exact same thing. Uh, you can see the armors is slightly different. Again, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to take an, art an artistic liberty with this one, and I'm probably going to keep it like this. Um, like some of those decals and stuff, we can definitely add them later on. Uh, right now, I think it, it makes more sense to have things that are like very similar, right? Like you wouldn't design a, a footpath as an engineer and then design a completely different one just for the for the sake of it. So, so we're going to keep it like this. And of course, we're going to mirror this to the other side on the world and on the world. And there we go. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. So <laughs> it looks like he has shoes now. Uh, and yeah, that's it, guys. We're done with this part. Uh, next part, we're going to go with the ankle and the um, and the arm uh, or the wrist and the arm uh, armor. So hang on tight and I'll see you back on the next video.